Hello everyone and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. This is Colin and today we are going to do a playthrough of this demo version of Cruel Frost for Euthia Torment of Resurrection. This game is a one to four player adventure style game. This expansion is looking awesome. There's only a little bit of what's actually going to be included in this uh, in the demo version. I have one scenario I can show you. I had two heroes to choose from. I've chosen Arlen that we'll be using to play with. But you can check out the game found website website for all the additional things that are going to be included in this. It's going to be a lot more than just that. That's just all we have to showcase here. Now I do want to call out, I did get this uh, sent to us from SFG, but right after doing this playthrough, I will be shipping it to somebody else. And so there's been no compensation provided for this playthrough. This is just me because I'm excited for Euthia. I love the game and I'm excited to show you this expansion. If you'd like to see a playthrough of the base game, I will put a link in the description below where actually I did a playthrough of the base game a couple years ago on One Stop, and you can watch that and see how the base game works. I will say in this demo version, this is only working with the base game. It is not working with the newest expansions, so I'm only playing with the base game rules plus the Cruel Frost. Our last disclaimer before we jump into setup is that this is a prototype, so rules might be changing. The uh, components aren't going to be final. So if you get your final version, you start watching this and the rules are different, yeah, uh, don't watch this for rules. Just watch this for if you're interested in maybe uh, backing the Cruel Frost or even checking out Euthia Torment of Resurrection if you haven't had a chance to. All right, let's do a light setup and then jump into our playthrough. The two new heroes that were available in this demo are Arlen and Zafiri. I am playing Arlen today just because I think he's a little bit easier to understand. Zafiri looks awesome, but I didn't have enough time to dig into all the rules to make sure I understand it, uh, just because I do have to send this off so quickly after getting it. So we're going to play as Arlen today. If you've played the base game of Euthia before, you know that your actions are all based upon these tokens that you start with. We have three different ones. We actually have a six total. That's because we have two of each of the same tokens. Because after we use two, we can choose to end the round early and save this one and then we refill them up. Each of these tokens can be used for one of two things that are on there, either movement or certain types of interactions, combat, trade, or some mining actions. So we have all three of these tokens available to us. We start with the four guard tokens. That's super important. You love these and these save your life so many times. The ice council scenario allows us to start with one healing potion and then we have our two starting items. We can tell that they are our starting items because they have no reputation symbol on the back. You can see it just has his symbol, that awesome looking mace torch thing. Looks so cool. Uh, so we know we start with these two. We have a worn scepter. This tells us how we can deal damage whenever we attack. We can also sell it for one gold, and if we had to buy it, it would be two gold, but we don't have to buy it. We have our breastplate here. It increases our health by one, and we can exhaust it once per round to increase the die of hope by one. If you've never played Euthia before, you don't know what the die of hope is, but if you have played, you know that that die sometimes can save you during combat, so being able to increase that by plus one can be super helpful. The breastplate has to be placed here. And we can see on our board, we actually have two places we could put our worn scepter. We're going to place it here. It's just because that symbol matches that tells you where you can place it on his board. Our starting health normally is five, but because of that breastplate, it's actually at six. So what we do is we place this heart token right above our max health. And then this tracks what our current health is. Now this piece is something new. This is a crystal. We're going to use that to track our frostbite, okay? In this game, we can take frostbite as damage. This frostbite token can start going up and down. If this goes down, we will not be able to heal ourselves until we heal up our frostbite. You use healing for frostbite as well. So think of it kind of like two different health tracks. It's really kind of cool. So let's say our health was here and our frostbite was here. We could not heal up our health until we healed up our frostbite first, and then we could increase our health. But that also means enemies might not just attack us for health damage, they might deal frostbite to us because it's so cold. And if ever this goes down to a zero, you are killed. So you have another way you can die. <laughs> 
We also now have a chill track. So we have a chill token here that we need to use and we'll track as we get colder and colder going into ice hex tiles. And then depending upon what we decide to do on our turns, we can resolve this upper effect. And if we don't die, then flip over this resolve token to the skull uh, version refresh this to zero, but then if ever we get to five or at the skull version, we automatically die. <laughs> Once again, another way you can lose. So this is another thing you need to manage, but you can also get crystals with this. You can get lots of cool things from this chill track, but you just have to be careful and you have to manage it appropriately. You'll be increasing this chill track anytime your hero enters a hex on any ice map tile or any ice storm hex. Okay, so, and I'll show you that as we play. You'll move these up and then any of these up to the fifth one, you can choose when you want to resolve them and then put it back down to the zero. But then after that, it's just gonna go up to the five and kill you. Arlen also has all of his hero tiles here. He has something unique where he has zero reputation hero tiles. That means we could train those right now. We would just need to find a marketplace, uh, uh, one of those locations where we can do a trade action, and then we would be able to train those. Uh, but you will have uh, a couple zeros, some twos, fours, and whatnot. And remember how these work. Whenever you uh, decide to train those, you'll choose one of them to keep discarding the other. When you play with this Ice Claw module, you'll replace all of the original items with new ones. These are new resource tiles, uh, uh, natural resource tiles. We've got new treasure tiles. We've got all of these new Merchant, Alchemist, and Dragon Slayer tiles. These are all completely new. They sent them in the demo. They're all unique and different from the original ones, which is really cool. This means while you play scenarios using the Ice Claws module, you'll have totally new items to explore and find. We'll also use some of these ice tiles as well. We'll be mixing them with the base ones. You'll see we'll have some base and some of these ice tiles. If we were only using these ice tiles, boy, our chill would go up so fast. So whenever we're moving on to these tiles, we have to be careful of where our chill level is at. During this scenario, we'll be using two types of minions. We have Ice Spiders and Ice Abominations. What's interesting with this is that these cards are all the same, so we actually leave them face up. This is gonna help us spawn them every other round, and you'll see how that works as we play. We also have these tokens here, which we will reveal and have that be included in how they attack, and you can see on their card, they not only deal regular damage, they also deal frostbite. And so you have to deal with both things, which I think is super cool. I love that additional element, but they still work the same way as the regular monsters, adding silver or gold cards to the cash. We've got our chaos tokens and our gar tokens. This tells us your health and whatnot. And then we do have a card that tells us whenever we defeat one of those enemies, we can gain these specific benefits. They give you 10 of these cards because you can take them as a trophy and put them in your sacks if you would like. Uh, so you have up to 10 of those to do that. We also have three levels of ice storm tokens. I've shuffled those up. Every other round, we're going to be dealing with ice storms. That's going to place these crystal tokens out on the map in certain locations. Those become ice storm hexes, where if we move into them, we then have to resolve our chill, increase our chill, I should say. And then we're able to remove that from that specific tile. But these are gonna to continue to cover the board and make it harder and harder for us to adventure. Now we can set up our reputation board. So this scenario is nine rounds long. So this is as far as we can go. By the end of round nine, we need to complete the objective, which I'll show you in a minute. We start ourselves with zero reputation and we place a marker here to denote we're on round one. Because we're playing with the Ice Claw uh, module, we also have these crystal tokens at, on every even numbered uh, round. And then at round eight, and if we were going past up to round 14, we actually place a chaos token here because we're going to double the amount of the ice hexes we're going to flip. So normally in a solo game, it's two every time we move to these. Now, if you're playing with more than one player, it's always just equal to the amount of players. So if I'm playing with two players, it'd be two. If I'm playing with three players, it'd be three. But for solo, it's two for these ones, and then it'll be four for this one that we'd be flipping. For this scenario, by round nine, we want to complete whatever is on the back side of this gathering two ice council card. Now, this gathering one card, there's multiples of those. I have shuffled them up and randomly chosen one. When we reveal the tile that has this symbol, we will then flip this over and that will give us what our objective is to complete part one. After we complete part one, then we need to complete part two. 
If we can do that before end of round nine, we win the game. This is our chart and how to set up our tiles. Up here we have our uh, fixed tiles that you always have. We have our encounter tiles. And you can see the encounter tile, the one in the level one area, is the gathering tile. So we know within the level ones we'll be seeing the gathering tile. And then these are just generic tiles that we grabbed from. And we've placed based upon the player count. So I have three in level one, two in level two, and two in level three to create our stack of tiles. Our starting tile for this scenario is the church without a priest. We're going to grab our miniature. Now this, of course, is subject to change, but boy, this is a nice hefty miniature. If you've seen any of the other miniatures from Euthia, you know they are really, really hefty and nice looking ones. And this one, even though it's 3D printed, boy, it looks fantastic. I love that detail. We're going to place Arlen right into the church. Now you're gonna see, I'm in the middle of this tile. Whenever you have a special encounter space, like the church, you start in the middle of the tile. It takes one movement to move to the edge of the tile. The moment you move to the edge of the tile, you interrupt anything else that you're doing, and you look to see if you have any empty adjacent spaces, and you need to reveal tiles until all spaces are uh, totally surrounded by tiles, <laughs> so you're not having empty spaces. You do that until, of course, your stack runs out. After revealing those tiles, you continue to in either encounter whatever you have here, or you can continue your movement. At the start of round one, for the enemies, we have to grab a silver card and place it into their cache. These silver cards are used sometimes by the chaos tokens for the enemies, and they usually make them a lot worse to deal with, okay? So we don't like that they have these, but there's not much we can do about them. The monsters can have up to three of these silver cards. If ever they gain a fourth, they'll gain that one, discard the four silver cards, and gain one gold one. And the gold ones are worse, way worse than the silver ones. So I'm going to set this aside. Anytime we gain a silver card, they will also gain a silver card. And anytime we gain a gold card, they'll also gain a gold card. Unfortunately, the cards aren't super helpful for us in the solo version. When you're playing competitively, you can actually control the monsters when other players are fighting them. For us, we'll just convert every four silver cards into one gold. That was a lot of words. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Do know I have my two hero dice. They're white. And I have all of my crazy amount of tokens. They're also white. Uh, I'm actually really impressed with this demo version. They're nice. It looks like they were printed out really nice. So hopefully you can read them well. So what we need to do to start our turn, we have to decide which one of these three action tokens we want to use. I would love to be able to move three spaces. However, if I do that, I then forego being able to do a combat my entire first round. I don't think that's a great idea. I don't love only moving one because I'm not going to be able to move anywhere other than onto the tile itself. So I think we'll forego having a trade action this round, and we're going to use this token to move two. I always love moving towards the portal spaces because if we happen to reveal another portal space, we can actually jump to another portal space for free. It doesn't even cost of movement, so long as there's no enemies guarding it. So our first movement, we're going to move here. We still have one more movement, but now we need to start revealing tiles. We'll start, we have to pick a spot. We're going to pick here. We have to make sure all of our tiles are oriented the same way. So we're going to flip this over. Oh, it's not one of the new tiles. We'll place this here. We have a treasure location where as long as we move into there, we can go ahead and draw one of the tokens here, and it could potentially give us something good. We have the mountains here where we could mine, but we first have to fight an enemy, which if we defeat, we get a coin and a potion. Or we could go to the forest over here where we could get four coins, take out an enemy, a level one enemy, and gain two silver cards. That looks really appealing. That money looks good. You want money to be able to train your abilities and get more of the cool equipment. Uh, but that's really far away. Okay, that was our first one. Our second one here is one of the new tiles. We have found the gathering tile, which is awesome. Now, this is also an ice portal. At this portal, you can jump to any other portal, regular or another ice portal, which is cool. Over here, it's another one of the treasure locations. You can see it's the same type of art. It's just in the cold. And then here, it looks like it's just a forest location. We can take out an enemy and get two gems and two coins if we do that. We're going to finish revealing tiles because there's still one more section we need to reveal. And then we can look at our gathering card. So that final tile will be this one. Oh, and we have an air elemental. We have some more mountains where we can deal with a monster. We have this air elemental that we can actually encounter and another portal space, which is so cool. 
Air elementals, though, can really mess up combat because both for the monsters and for myself, if we have a combat in any adjacent tiles, so that's any of the eight adjacent hexes, I should say, not tiles, hexes, we have to flip our highest die over to the other side unless we roll doubles. Uh, so a lot of times you can roll a great roll to uh, a six and a five and all of a sudden your six becomes a one. Can be really helpful with the monsters, can also be brutal for yourself. We've now completed revealing our tiles. Let's go ahead and look at our gathering card. In order for us to complete this gathering card, we need to have our shields on here times the number of players plus two. So one times two, we need three shields on here. Once we do that for each shield that we put on here, we get one reputation, we get a certain amount of gold, X is the number of shields, so we'll get uh, three gold, and we get to choose a gathering quest card, which I'll show you when we get there. In order for us to put a shield token on here though, we need to defeat one of those ice spiders. Well, there aren't any ice spiders out, or we need to liberate a hex with an ice, uh, with an ice clan, which we have not seen yet either. If the gathering map tile is revealed during round one, ice spiders are not placed on the map until the beginning of round two. And we're going to place out two ice spiders because it's always equal to the amount of players plus one, so that gives us two. When we're in phase one, it's ice spiders. When we're in phase two, it's ice abominations. I've now completed our first move. I think for our second move, we're going to move into this space. Now, we cannot move into that space if we do not have a combat action token available to us because we have to immediately be able to go into combat there. But to be able to get two guard tokens and a coin for taking that out just seems pretty good because it gives me flexibility to use my guard tokens <laughs> uh, because those guard tokens you're going to see they're going to save our life so our second movement we're going to move into here which means i immediately have to spend our second uh, action token using the combat one and then before we even initiate that combat we have to reveal another tile over here and we have ooh, a regular tile this one has a merchant a forest and another portal this is a bit of a bummer because we have two uh, portals sitting right next to each other and one portal here i'm not sure how many times i'm going to be using those portals but it is what it is let's go ahead and take a look at our level one enemy we're going to fight on the back of all of the enemy cards, it tells you what rewards you'll get if you defeat the enemy so long as you are within a reputation noted here. So my reputation is zero. So if I'm between zero and 15, I would gain two reputation and a silver card. If I was above 15, I wouldn't get the reputation. I get still get the silver card. This enemy will have between three and five health and will attack for one to three damage. And we have bats. Oh, these guys are not terrible. Three health. They don't add any silver cards to the cache. They're going to have one chaos token and one guard token that they can potentially use. So I'll place those on their cards so I don't forget. They will negatively impact our dice roll by three. That's what this three is here whenever we fight them. Because, of course, they're flying around. They're harder to hit. I don't know how we're going to hit them with this mace. Maybe we chuck it at it. I have the first edition of Euthia, so I'm not sure if in the second edition they made this official, but this is the combat flow chart for solo mode that I have used, and it's super helpful. It looks incredibly complex, but it really isn't. Uh, we'll be going through this very quickly against this bat, hopefully being able to take him out, but just know that uh, you should download this if you have the first version and you're trying to play the game. I will put a link in the description below for this because it is on BGG. Our first step of combat is grabbing the She's Intervention card, and we need to grab our die and place it at a zero. If ever, when we roll our dice, the initial roll, if it's a two and a, a between two and five, we will get to increase that by one. If the enemy's uh, dice that are revealed on the combat cards is between 10 and 12, we also get to increase that by one. Then we can at any time during combat, we can use it to um, tick down. We can use a, so let's say it was at a one. We can take it from that one back down to a zero to be able to increase our die value by one. We can, if we have two worth, we can actually convert that into a guard token. And if we have three uh, total uh, hope uh, from this die, we can increase our die level by one and deal a damage to the enemy, which is kind of cool. And remember, my breastplate can actually increase that die of hope by one. So I'm actually going to do that right now because I'm only going to get into one combat. So I'm going to grab that turn it this way and you can see it has that plus one symbol that means the die of hope is already at a one which is great we now have our combat deck right next to our bats we're going to flip our top one over and we have an 11 
Ow. Okay, six plus five. That would automatically be dealing us three damage here. You can see 10 plus is three damage. First thing we get to do, that die of hope gets to be ticked to two. I will take that because it's at 11. However, there is an air elemental that's going to take the highest die, flipping it down to a one. So they're only at six. We then look to see what is showing here. This is showing the chaos symbol. If they have a chaos token, they will use it. You'd think they have this guard token. Why don't they want to use it? Well, it's not on this card, so they won't use the guard token. They will just use the chaos token. What that means is we're going to draw this silver card. They only have one. I'll explain how when having more than one works when we have that, because I'm sure we will. Right now, we're just going to have this one. Oh, boy. Okay. We're cursed. That means our die roll is not only going to be minus three, it's going to be minus three from this. So it's going to be minus six. <laughs> <laughs> when we fight these bats uh, but it doesn't make their attack any worse so that's good so right now they're at six for their combat that would mean we're taking two damage i think i'm going to soak that we'll go from six down to four health we could have if we wanted to used one of our guard tokens and actually flipped it over and used it on the negative side we would make them re-roll one of their dice we could do that five and then we'd subtract two from that total value that they had didn't feel like it was worth it i'm thinking of using these guard tokens at least two of them. I might even use three if I need to to hopefully just kill this thing right off the get-go because what I need is an 11. However, I'm, hitting, I'm getting hit by a minus six, so we'll see how this works. What I like to do when playing solo is use a black die to denote negative adjustments and a white die to denote positive adjustments to my roll. Right now, I'm at a minus six, so that's why I have that black die, but that's after I roll. So I'm going to give my two dice a roll. I roll a six and a five. Really? That's an amazing roll. That's an 11 right there. However, first thing that happens, this 6 gets flipped to a 1. So I'm only at a 6. And then if we, we use this 6 here, we're actually at a 0. <laughs> okay, do we want to use Gar tokens? I, I, I still feel like it might be worth it. Why the heck not? Let's do it. We'll use our first one here. We will re-roll this die, and we have a 5. Okay, so we're at 5, 10, plus 2 is 12. 12 minus 6 is 6. At least with a roll of a six, I would deal two damage. And on my next roll, I get a positive plus one to my combat roll. So I think I'm just going to take that. I'm going to deal two damage to that bat. That bat isn't dead. We're going to have to deal, deal with another round of combat. This is where it'd be amazing to have something to deal one damage if I had had that as a first strike or something, but I didn't. Oh, well, it's right at the beginning. Okay, they're at a seven this time, four and a three. And that four is going to be ticked down to the uh, opposite side, which is a three. So they're at a six. For six, they are dealing us two damage again, which knocks us down to two health. Is it worth using a guard token to try and knock that down to only one? That's the lowest I can go. I don't think that's worth it. They're not going to use their guard token because they don't have a guard token symbol here. So we'll just take two damage again. That will tick us down to two health. I didn't say this specifically, but even though they had those chaos symbols on the combat card, since they didn't have a token, they couldn't use them. Not to mention, they don't even have any more uh, silver or gold cash cards. So we have a positive one from our mace last time and a minus three because of the bats. So we have a minus two in total here. We'll roll our dice. We have a six and a three. That's going to be flipped to a one. So we're at four. Four is not great. <laughs> Four minus three plus one. We're only at two. So we're going to have to use another guard token. We'll use this guard token to re-roll this up. Oh my gosh. Okay. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven, six, five. That's, that's fine. Five is enough to deal two damage and take out the bat. I can use our die of hope, ticking it down to a zero to get a guard token, but we're going to have to discard one of them because we can only hold four. And we're going to gain two from defeating this enemy. This bat will give us two reputation, so now we're at level two. We gain one silver card, and so do the enemies. You start the game with three sack spots. I can actually hold one of these enemies as a trophy, placing it in our sack. I'll place it there for now. I can drop it at any time if I don't want it. Because of this space, we'll gain one coin, woohoo, and two guard tokens, but I can only hold one, so we'll just put one on our board. We will then place two of these mining tokens here to denote that we've defeated the enemy there. If we want to do a mining action there in a future round, or even in this round, we'll just remove one of these because you can only mine in each space one time. 
we have one more action token remaining. Why don't we use our mining action token? So when we do that, we will exhaust or remove this token to denote that now we've mined that location. And then we can look at one of the new mining tiles from this expansion that's for the mountains. We found a pile of ore. This is cool. So you can see there's a lot of different symbols on here. What we can do, if ever we gain two crystals, we can give up those two crystals anywhere outside of combat to roll the rune die, which is a new die for this game. It can give you, or I think it's called a gem die, actually. This is what it looks like. You can roll it and you'll gain one of the new types of gems. There's new gem types in this game. Uh, so you can roll that and gain three coins. Or we can go to a shop and at that shop we can trade this in either for one reputation and rolling this die or for one citrine and we can roll the die. The citrine, which is actually really interesting, it's permanent effect, which it has to be placed on an item to be able to trigger, but it's permanent effect is just giving you a reputation. So these are basically the same. It's just maybe if you had an item that needed that, you might want that. So I right now don't have any crystals, so I'm just going to hold on to this. And if nothing else, I can sell it for these two things. That ends our first round. It always goes by so fast. We're going to replenish our tokens here. We will refresh our breastplate, and then we'll move ourselves to round two. At round two, two things are going to happen at the beginning. Let's go ahead and do our spawning of the ice spiders first. The first thing we need to do is reveal our top compass tile. That's going to help us determine where to place these ice spiders. We can see here west, the farthest west is going to be the most important, followed by north, followed by east. We then need to look at the ice spider spawning card, and we can see here the first location type we would look for is any earth elemental spaces. There aren't any. The next are any air elemental spaces. We have one of those out. As I was mentioning before, you don't need the miniature for the elemental. It's not considered a blocking figure. A blocking figure would be a hero or something like that. We don't have a blocking hero here, so we can actually place the spider in this location. Now, they sent us these nice 3D printed ones, but they're great. I have some really cool ones from the Return to the Dark Tower game, as so I'm going to use those ones. Look at these spiders. <laughs> so we're going to place one of the ice spiders here. Our third location to look at would be mountains. The farthest west mountains would be right here, so I'll place the ice spiders here. We now have two ice spiders on the board that we can encounter. And remember, we need to encounter those in order to complete our scenario. Next, we need to place out two crystals out onto the hexes on the board. That's going to create these ice storms that we may want to deal with. We have to grab our top level one, and we can see, oh my gosh, it's going to be one of the elemental spaces. We only have one of those. That's that ice element, or I should say air elemental. This is quite brutal because we'd have to deal with the ice storm and the minion before we can even encounter the air elemental if we even want to encounter the air elemental. <laughs> Our second ice storm will be placed in a mountain location. And you know what? That's right where the other uh, spider is because it cannot be in a location with a hero. I'm in a mountain space, so it will be in the only other mountain space on the board. We'll place that crystal here. What we can do now is when we enter these hexes with this crystal, we have to suffer one frostbite and move our chill token up one space. Then we'd actually collect this crystal token and we could use that. For example, my uh, ore that I found, if I had two of those, I could actually roll that gem die and gain three gold. Well, it's not terrible, uh, but I have to deal with frostbite twice to do that and they're right with the minions. So I deal with that, then I deal with the minion. And if I was doing this here too, after that, I also would have to fight a level one enemy. <laughs> I would so die right now, so that's not happening. We also can't forget the monsters will gain their second silver card into their cache. Okay, I'm thinking of going over here and trying to take out another enemy. And then I'll be at a place, uh, a merchant, where I can actually unveil some of my hero tiles. And I'll have four gold to play with. That is, of course, assuming I don't die when I try and fight whatever that enemy is. Because I am going to use this healing potion to heal for two, so I'm only at four health. I haven't gone on any of the ice tiles yet. I will soon. But I do feel like you need to level up a little bit before you do that. So what I am going to do is I'm going to use my two movement uh, tile here to be able to move two. And then I'll have to use this one for the combat. Our first movement will move us to this spot. We're still at level one tiles. Ooh, we've got another ice tile. 
we'll place that here. Oh, we have another merchant that we could go to. Oh, and we have a new, it's not technically an elemental, or I should say it is an elemental, but it does not impact you the same way as it does with the other elementals. This is an ice elemental and you can encounter it. Just so you can see, in case I don't encounter it, you do a hero roll. You can take frostbite, get some additional uh, treasure tiles, and some crystals. Actually, that's a way to get some crystals. Ooh. Our second movement, I still think we're going to move here because I'm not ready to increase my chill just yet. I do have a bunch of empty spaces around us. This is still another level one tile. This is a regular level one. We'll place that here. And then our, oh no, we still have a couple more level ones. We have this level one, another ice one. This right here is an ice clan. I definitely want to try and help them because if I do that, I can place one of my shield tokens on this card and I don't have to defeat as many spiders. <laughs> so I'm probably going to do that, well, I don't know, maybe soon. First, though, we have to deal with whatever enemy is here guarding this merchant's space. You know, it makes me wonder, from a world perspective, how do these merchants get anything done if there were monsters around them? I don't know. Our monsters have two silver cards. Let's flip this over. We have the Shadow Beast for health. He's going to gain another one of these cards. That will be a third one. And on top of that, he's gaining one Gar and three Chaos Tokens. We are not impacted by any elementals for this attack, so it's just going to be a regular combat. Let's go ahead. There's nothing I'm doing on my board. I already healed up. That's all I can do. I'm still a basic level one hero. Let's see what they're going to do. We'll flip over their combat card, and they have a four and a five. This is not a 10 to 12, so we do not get to increase our die of hope. We're really close just by one, but does not have it. The monster would then try and use a guard token, but they have no guard token symbol. Plus, if the dice are above a three, so four, five, or six, they will not use a guard token. They will, though, use one of these chaos tokens. They have three of these silver cards. We're going to flip the first one. This is Mind Control, which essentially states they're going to increase their attack value by five, and that's their dice roll value. So right now they're at nine. They're actually at 14. That means they're dealing three damage to me. I'm going to be one away from dead. Uh, and we're going to flip this one, and it is another Mind Control. So because of that, instead of it being a plus five, we're going to use the lower effect of this. It states they're only going to get a plus three, that's 9 plus 3 is 11, which is just enough to have them do the 3 damage. And not only that, they're going to steal one of our guard tokens. We have 4 guard tokens. We now only have 3. They are going to control this guard token. What a jerk. And then they'll discard these two cards. We won't even reveal this one because with these silver cash cards, you can only get a combo of 2 cards. With the gold ones, they can get combos of 3 if I take three damage, there's no way I'm going to be able to defeat this guy because I'm realizing he has four health and the most damage I can do is three. <laughs> uh, so that means I have to be able to last two rounds. So I'm going to use a guard token. It's going to be my second one because my first one was stolen. And I'm going to reroll his five up and it's going to be a two. That's awesome. So four plus three is seven plus two is nine, minus two is only seven. At seven, he's dealing two damage. Do I want to use another guard token? Uh, if I do, I can maybe get it down to one damage. It might be worth it. I'm going to use our, our second to last guard token. That's going to be a minus four. I'm going to make him reroll this four. So I'm going to roll this up. That's a three. So now we have three, six, seven, eight, seven, six, five, four. At four, he's only dealing me one damage instead of the three damage. That came at a very hefty price, though. I only have one guard token remaining. We'll then roll our two dice. We have a six and a two. That's eight. That's well in line for two damage, which will work. Plus, because of our Warren Scepter, we get plus one to our next die roll. So two damage to the Shadow Beast. We just need to deal it two more. When you play this game, you have to be ready to die because it's going to happen. Their second card is a three and a six. That's one away. Man, we're getting so close. Uh, nine, we did not get to increase the die of hope. They are going to use another chaos token. They're not using any guard tokens, which is kind of insane. Let's grab this. This states if they have one card, which they do, and they have a six plus, they're dealing plus one damage. So right now they're dealing at a nine, two, plus one is three, which would kill us. 
So yeah, we've got to do it. So during our turn, we will use a negative Gar token, our last one, to make them re-roll this six. Right now, they're at a one. We'll roll this up. Oh, a two. They're at a two, which still... Actually, a two does no damage to us. Their card is a three to five is one damage. So they had a three plus a one is four, minus two, which is a two. That is no damage to us. That means we can roll our dice up. We have a three plus a two, which is five. That's actually glorious. That gives us an increase on our uh, die of hope by one. We're then going to exhaust this to uh, increase that to a two. So we're now at a two. We're then going to use that immediately to make it a zero. <laughs> because that will give us one guard token. Not having guard tokens is brutal. Okay, now at a five, we have just enough to deal two damage from this. And that's all we need to take out that monster. And we still have three health. I am not sad about that. This will be two more reputation for us and two more silver cards for us. But that's also two silver cards back into the cash for the uh, monsters. We also will gain three coins because of this location. The merchant's happy that we took out that monster, that shadow beast. And we'll place one of our tokens there to denote that we can now trade in this location. We'll also place that Shadow Beast in our second sack. I don't know where we're carrying these enemies, but <laughs> we got one on both shoulders. And apparently some ore in our pockets. <laughs> now, I'd love to do a trade action, but I had to use that to move. So I'm going to claim end of round this time, and we'll slide this over. We will then replenish with our uh, tiles again, and we'll have two of those available to us this time, which is kind of nice. So we'll refill that here and put this one here. We'll also give another silver card to the monsters, so they now have three. If they gain one more, we'll discard those four and gain a gold card. We'll move ourselves to round three. Now, I do want to mention, when we once we get to round four, we're going to have more Ice Storm hexes revealed. Okay, two more. But if I don't take out those ice spiders, we're not going to reveal more ice spiders until we start defeating those ones. So there'll always only be two out on the board or maybe just one, and then they'll come back out. But right now, we only have the two. We're not going to have to respawn new ones. We'll start this round with a trade action because we're at the merchant. We can perform any of the following trades as many times as we wish. We can purchase items. I'll show you those in a second. We can sell an item. I don't really have many items except for that or... We can heal, which we'll do. We cannot purchase guard tokens because we're not at a Dragon Slayer Tower. We can unveil hero tiles, which I'm definitely going to do. We can train abilities, and we can unlock hero or equipment slots. Why don't we start by unveiling our hero tiles? This costs one coin, so I'm down to only three coins. But now I can unveil all of these, the zeros, the twos, and the fours. I might not be able to buy all of them now. I also can look at them and then do some other actions and then maybe be able to buy them depending upon what I do. So let's start with our zeros. Our zeros are monster hunters or we have an offering. Now you might notice I have two trophies sitting in my sack. That's on purpose. This monster hunter is awesome. What you can do during combat, you can discard on one of those trophies to give you plus two to your die roll and plus one damage. <laughs> How can I say no to that? This one is cool, though, because it can give you reputation and heal. But that seems boring. Who wants to do an offering? I want to be a monster hunter, so we're going to grab this one. Our level twos that we have to choose from is Guidance, or we have uh, Scout. Scout, I'm telling you right now, is amazing. That's because it gives you additional movement. So I'm definitely thinking of getting Scout. However, it costs a coin, and I do think I have a spot for it, actually. So I'm going to spend the coin. Guidance is helpful. It decreases the attack value by one, so that, that combat value by one. You can spend two ticks of the Die of Hope to be able to increase your health by two. Uh, it does cost two, though, and you can't use it against dragons. Yeah, I'm definitely doing the scout. So I'm spending the one so I can do the scout. I have two bucks remaining. Our third and final ones we can choose from are the Ornate Shield and this helm that is nameless. <laughs> uh, this ornate shield is awesome. You can use it after the uh, monsters have rolled their dice to give them minus two to their dice roll. But then our next round, we have a minus two to our roll. Uh, and we can use one tick of the die of hope to just deal plus one damage. Can't be used against dragons. But it costs four gold. I don't have enough. I have two. This helm 
gives us one additional health, we can slot one of these gems on here. And this gem, if it's slotted, it would we can flip it once around to be able to increase our die roll by one, which is cool. Uh, but we would need that gem and I don't have it. Uh, we can once per round use this to heal by one, just to heal by one. I'm actually kind of thinking this one, especially because right now I don't even have a slot open to be able to put this on our board. But right now I don't have enough gold. So I'm going to set these aside. I can't actually use those yet until I have enough money. I can though place my monster hunter here because this symbol works and the scout also works here. You can see this spot as well as the remaining three spots on our board, we either need to spend some sort of elemental uh, essence to be able to unlock them or tons of gold, which I don't have. I have two gold. I do think I am going to sell this ore and I'm going to sell it and gain this one gem, which technically could give us more reputation, but I think I'm just going to sell it and I'm going to roll this die. We'll roll it up. And we've just gained another gem, which if we would be able to slot would give us plus one health, which also would be cool, but I can also sell it for money. <laughs> Here is what I'm thinking. I'm going to sell each of these gems for two gold each. Two, four, plus that is six. I'm going to use five to grab this helm. That means I can't grab the ornate shield, which hurts a little bit. Uh, so that means I'll have one coin remaining, which I'm just going to use that coin to heal. And I'll show you how we do that in a second. But this helm does give us one extra max health, which will increase our regular health and our frostbite level by one. You can see here on this board, we can spend one gold to heal ourselves by five. So that's our final coin or gold, and that will heal us up to full of seven health. Oh my gosh, I feel so powerful. I won't for long, but for right now, it feels good. There are these items here. They cost six, seven, eight, and five. I have zero coins, nothing else I want to sell because I forgot to take this off my board, but I sold this natural resource, this ore, so I'll discard that. I have one sack space free. I do get one free refresh of this, but I think I'm going to leave it for now. Uh, there is something I want to mention. You're going to see that the backgrounds of these different types of armor have different colors. You want to in this game, if you can, to collect armor sets. If you have armor sets, you'll be able to trigger extra abilities. For an example, if you have an armor set of the same color, that's four of them on your board, you get plus one health from this item. Arlen's armor set is of no color, so it does not count for any of the armor sets, just so you know. I've completed our trade action. Let's go ahead and move one, and we're going to have a combat. We're going to try and liberate a hex with an ice clan. So we're going to move one into this space. First, we need to reveal our final level one tile. After this, we have level twos. Oh, it's another ice tile. It looks like we have a merchant, plus we have another ice clan. Oh my gosh. And then this location just looks like a force location with lots of benefits for taking out a level one enemy. That's our first step into an ice tile. So our chill goes up by one. We could resolve this outside of combat, which we're going to be in combat, so we can't now. But we could resolve this. I'm not going to right now. I'm going to wait till we get a little higher. This is still only a level one enemy. Only one reputation, though. Two gold and two silver. We have a gecko. <laughs> okay, it gets only two of these chaos tokens. No gar tokens at all. Well, that's sweet. And we'll reveal this top one. Okay, they're at an eight. The only bad thing I'm seeing of this is we have two chaos token symbols. Let me show you how this works. They're going to try and spend both of them, especially because they have three cards. They'll reveal their first one. They have an enhancement, which means if they have a six plus, which they do, they're dealing plus one damage. And then they have a second enhancement, which means those two are going to combine together. That's going to be their first uh, chaos token use. And they're not done. So right now, with both of these together, they're dealing uh, plus two damage. They're dealing five damage to me right now. Oh my gosh, my health is seven, you guys. Oh, you see how quickly this goes? And then their other one is, okay, they're just going to decrease our attack value by three from our curse. I did not want to have to use our last gar token, but I'm going to have to. We're going to make it a minus two with that gar. We'll roll, wow, that's a one. One, two, three, and then that's minus two, two, one. <laughs> At a one, the gecko is not going to hit us for anything. 
you can see here two through nine, it's zero. And they need an eight plus to be able to deal us plus two damage, so that won't even happen. For our roll though, we are at a minus five, ouch. So I am going to use our breastplate first, turn it sideways to increase the die of hope to a one somewhere. If you look at the hero attack phase, you can see that any arrows pointing to the left, you have to activate before you actually roll your dice. Any arrows pointing this way, you can activate after, and that includes the guard tokens. Because of that, I am going to discard one of my trophies to increase our die roll by two and do plus one damage. We'll get rid of this shadow beast. With our positive two and the minus five from the gecko, we are at a minus three. We'll roll our dice. We have a nine. Nine minus three is six. Six will deal two damage in our next combat round. Oh, and it's going to be plus one. That'll be three damage thanks to our monster hunter ability. So three damage to the gecko. We now have no guard tokens to our name. We'll reveal this card. We have an 11 for them. Oh, an 11 for them will let us increase our uh, dive hope to two, which we can immediately convert into a, a guard token. <laughs> Take that. So we'll have a guard token back. Uh, do I want to use it to affect this? That's three damage. No, I think, I think I'm just going to deal with the three damage. We'll take the three damage going down to four health, but then we have this that we can exhaust after that to go back up to five. That's why I felt like eh, it wasn't terrible. We just need a four or higher to take out this gecko. That's an eight. That's more than enough. We will take out the gecko. The gecko will give us one reputation, two coins, and two silver cards, which actually we can convert then. We'll have five silver cards. We'll convert four of them into one gold card and convert that into a coin. And then we'll have one silver card left over. But of course, the cash now has two silver cards in it again. We'll also gain one more coin from this location itself. So I have four coins now to play with and another gar token. So that gives me two Gar tokens in my supply. Finally, we'll place one shield here. We need two more to be able to get to the Ice Council 2 card, and I'm already on round three. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. When you defeat a monster on an Ice Clan hex, you may decide to immediately join the Ice Clan by placing one of your interaction tokens on that hex elemental side up. We are most certainly going to do that. When you join the Ice Clan, you may perform any of the usual trade actions as many times as you wish following the standard rules except for the following. Any trade that is usually paid with gold must be paid with crystal tokens. I don't have any crystal tokens. One crystal token is equivalent to one gold. However, because they love you so much, I'm assuming, <laughs> because you helped liberate them, you do get a bonus of four crystals. You're not able to sell these crystals to gain gold, but you can do these different actions with them. You can pay one crystal to heal up to eight. You can pay two crystals for one guard token, or you can pay three crystals to get one of these different types of gems. Oh, so cool. I'd love to get the gem that I could actually slot, but we all know how much I love guard tokens, right? I love them. They're my favorite thing. So I think I'm going to spend two of these for one guard token. That'll put us to three. And then I'm going to spend one of these to heal to full. And I'm not sure, but I think I can keep this crystal. So I think I'm just going to keep this crystal for future activations. I have one extra movement action tile that I'm going to use because I got four this round because I saved one from the last round. And I'm going to move to this hex because there's a portal here. I'm going to have to take chill quick. That will push me up to the number two. Now, if I resolve this, I could roll the white die. I take one frostbite, which I still haven't taken any frostbite yet, and then flip over my resolve token. I will have to reveal our first level two tiles because I have open spaces. Ooh, look at that, another merchant space. Oh, there's a treasure space. Well, oh, I might want to go there just to gain a treasure. I have an open slot. Uh, I was thinking of doing something else, but <laughs> this is always what happens. Oh, an ice elemental. Oh, and another location I could try and help. It's still a level one. That could help us with our ice council. So many options. Well, I've decided to be risky. I'm going to use our scout for one more move of one. I want to see what we can find in this treasure location, uh, but I will have to take another chill for that. 
And we're flipping over this tile right here. That's another treasure location, actually two of them. No, that's a natural resource, not a treasure. That's a natural resource location. That's a treasure and that's an alchemist. I'll place one of my hero markers here. I'm going to take my third chill. <laughs> And what I found for my treasure is a healing potion. <laughs> okay, maybe that wasn't worth it. Well, we certainly did a lot that round. Let's refresh everything so it's ready to be used next round. We'll get our three tokens so we can have at least one combat. And we need a one here. Perfect. We'll move to round four. Since we're in an even round, we would normally need to spawn more of those ice minions if we didn't have two out, but we have two out, so we're good there. We do also have to do the ice storms. We'll need to do two of these again. So this one is one of those treasure locations. We have more than two of those locations, so let's flip the next one here. We need to go south, the southmost ones, then moving towards the westmost, and then the north. The two southernmost are right here and here, so that was actually pretty easy. <laughs> okay, we're going to start round four now. What do we want to do? For whatever reason, it's easy for me to forget another silver card to the cache for the monsters. Okay, for our turn, I have a plan. Let's go ahead and use our scout to move one. We're going to move to this portal space, but that's going to mean we move up to the fourth spot on our chill track. And I'm thinking of activating it right now, which means we're going to take two wounds and two frostbite. We're also going to gain a crystal and we can roll these two dice. Two wounds means we're down to five health and two for our frostbite means it's down to six. We'll place our second crystal here. We'll roll the dice up and we took two more frostbite but we get two more crystals. I'm not sure that was a great trade-off, but it is what it is. I've got four crystals. Now my frostbite is below my health, which means the next time I heal, I have to heal my frostbite up by two instead of my health. Ugh. This is then going to go all the way back here, and now I'm going to flip this over to the skull side. That means I'm not going to be able to trigger any of these, and when I get to five, I just die. When I die, then this gets refreshed. Our frostbite gets healed. We do lose two reputation, and we start back off at the church. So I think because of all of that, I am going to use my healing potion right now to increase my frostbite above my health. But now my max health is five until I can push my frostbite up higher. Because we're at a portal location, I can for free jump to another portal. I'm going to jump to this one. That does mean I need to reveal another level two tile. Oh, we have an air elemental right here. Another one. Double air elementals. <laughs> I haven't shown encountering an air elemental yet, so let's do that. We're going to use this action token for one movement, and we're going to move into this space with this air elemental. Now, when we do that, we still need to reveal a tile here. And oh, we have an encounter location, finally. We haven't seen one of those because uh, the encounter locations were only slotted in levels 2 and levels 3. We have found the blacksmith encounter, and there are specific ones for this expansion, which we'll use. There are seven total encounter cards. For a solo game, we'll choose three of them. So I'm going to grab these three. We'll discard these other three to the box. We won't ever see them. And then of these three, we'll reveal two of them that we could potentially complete. It looks like this blacksmith is looking for specific natural resources. So if we find those specific tiles and bring them here, we could gain three gold and one of any of these types of gems that you see down here. How these work, if we do that and we do that as our turn, we move there, it's a free action to deliver those items there. Then at the end of that round, we'd reveal the other card. And so we could do that up to three times during the game. Here we have our encounter with the air elemental. We're going to roll up our dice, and remember, if we roll doubles, we're fine. Otherwise, our highest die is going to be flipped, depending upon, depending upon what we get with our hero roll. Two to five, we take some damage. We can teleport and get a guard token. Six to eight, we take more damage. We can get a treasure. And nine plus, we can actually get air essence. We'll roll up our two dice. We have a six and a five. What a ridiculous roll, but we have to flip it to a six only. That would give us two damage, a treasure tile, a teleport, and a guard. We're going to do that. We're going to grab the guard token right here. We'll take the two damage going down to three health. 
We'll grab one of these treasure tiles. Ooh, that's a three health treasure tile. We'll place that here. It's a scroll. We can use that even during combat to heal. And we can teleport two spaces. Now, I also need to place this token in that spot because I have now encountered that elemental and I cannot encounter that same elemental again. We'll place that token right here. Now we can teleport up to two spaces away. And this is where I could be risky or I could be safe. I could teleport myself one, two to somewhere right here. And then I'm one away from this merchant where I could potentially heal. Ah, that's somewhat tempting. Or though I could teleport myself to here and try and take out one of these ice spiders. And well, you know, that's what I'm trying to show you is the new stuff. So I'm going to teleport right here to where the ice spider is. Now, the first thing that happens, there's a crystal here. Because there's a crystal here, that's an ice storm hex. I need to resolve that first, okay? So I'm going to resolve that by taking one frostbite damage, but then I get to gain this crystal. That frostbite damage, we'll put this down to here. I also have to have a combat token to be able to do that. I do have a combat token. That's why I felt okay doing this. I'm then going to spend this three health uh, scroll right now. We're going to go one, two, three. So at least we're at five health and six for our frostbite. These ice spiders have five health. That means I'm going to have to last at least two rounds against them. Ugh. We're going to see they have one more of the silver cards. Well, that's going to be the fourth one. I'd place it here, discard it. They're going to get their first gold cash card. They're also going to grab two, not one, but two of these tokens and one of these guard tokens. They're also going to grab this, and that is because it's down here. And you can see no matter what, they're going to deal one frostbite damage plus regular damage up here. And this looks to be just another one of the chaos tokens. They have three chaos tokens and one guard token. We are in a spot with an air elemental. Don't forget that. So they're going to have a roll of a 10, which will increase our dive hope. Oh, nice. Our dive hope will be ticked to a one. And then their highest number die will actually go down to a one. So they're going to be at five. They are going to use one of these chaos tokens. And that is for the only gold card they have. And this one is plus two, and it's going to regenerate one health. Oh, this card gives a one-time effect of the enemy immediately healing by one, but it's already at max health. But at the beginning of each round, it's going to heal by one. These ice spiders are going to be the death of me. So their roll is four plus one, which is five. Plus two more is seven. That's two damage and one frostbite. I think right now, should I take that or should I try? Yeah, I think I'm going to take that because it will not impact my roll then. Two damage will put us down to three and one frost puts us down to five. We'll then take our dice and roll them. We have a three. Oh my gosh. We will increase our die of hope to two. We will flip our highest die to a five. That actually puts us to a six. I definitely think I'm going to use a gar token for that. We're going to reroll that one. Oh, six plus five is 11, plus one more is 12. And I'm going to give this to me because recording is the way that it is. I'm going to use Monster Hunter. I'm going to discard this gecko for sure to increase for plus one damage. So that means I'm dealing four damage right now that almost kill it, but I don't. But that's okay. It'll heal one, and I'll put it down to three, and then I only need to deal two damage next time. So I feel like that's worth it. To start that next round, the Ice Spider has three damage on it, healing that one. Okay, it's only a one and a three. Bummer, that's going to change actually to a one and a four. So it's at a five. It will definitely use this guard token to reroll that one. Rerolling that one, it's at a four. Four plus four is eight, plus two more is ten. I can't have that. I can't take three damage. So I'm going to use this, make it reroll that four, and it's four is a two. Okay. So these two are going to cancel each other out. It's only at a six. At a six, it's two more damage and a frostbite damage to us. Two more damage puts us down to one health. Frostbite, we're down to four. Our roll is next. We just need a five. Oh, no, we have a six and a two. This will be flipped to a three. Oh, my gosh, guard tokens. Do you see why I love guard tokens? We'll use a guard token, re-roll this. <laughs> six, seven, eight, nine, ten, boom. That is two damage. That's all we need to take out that ice spider. We'll be able to grab the ice spider as a trophy, which is great. 
we also gain two reputation that will sneak us up to seven uh we would get a gar token back thank goodness that's our second gar token we get a crystal but i can't do anything with a crystal two more silver cards so we're one away from getting a coin but of course two more for the monsters with the addition of the two coins we now have six coins to play with and of course our second shield here we just need one more we're currently at an air elemental space we could for a free action encounter it and likely die because our health is one our frostbite is four i don't think i'm going to do that instead i think i'm just going to end the round oh wait before i do that i need to spend the die of hope the two here take it back down to a zero to get another gar token that means i have three gar tokens i love those gar tokens of course, when I was in combat, I remembered to use my helm, and I'm going to heal one Frostbite with that, because why not? Doesn't matter. Health or Frostbite, I need to heal both. Uh, then we will ready everything for the next round. I have another silver card in the cache for the monsters. That means they have three. I will refill all of these. And after doing that, we can move our round marker. We'll move to round five. We're now going to be over halfway, and I still need one more shield on here before I can move to the next phase of the game. To start our action this time, let's use our two movement from this action token. We're going to move one here. We're in a portal location, so we can teleport to this one. And then two, we're going to go back to this merchant. We're going to say, hey, do you remember us? <laughs> uh, I do want to mention the I, uh, the ice clans after you go there and interact you cannot interact there again i have to go to a new ice clan and become a part of that new ice clan so for an example over here over here or up here if you can see that to do this trade action we will use our trade action token i hate to do this but i think i have to i'm going to spend two out of my five coins to heal for 10. That will mean I can heal my frostbite one, two, three, and then four, five, and one, two, three, four. Yeah, there we go. I'm at full. I'm realizing crystals can be sold for one gold. So I'm going to sell this crystal for one gold so I can unveil my two level sixes. Oh, the holy scepter. That looks awesome. Or treatment. Oh, we can do healing or more damage. This could deal up to four instead of my wimpy at three. Yeah, you know, I've got to go damage. <laughs> So I'm going to sell this one for one damage that I have here. And then two, three, four, five, all of these crystals I will use to be able to slot in my Holy Scepter. I have three coins remaining. I do get one free refresh of the marketplace. Let's do it. Here we have four new tiles, and I actually think I can buy these ones. Unfortunately, I was somewhat silly using all of those crystals because what I can do is spend two coins and gain this, okay? And I can put it on my hero board. It will allow me, whenever I do one of those mining actions, I can look at three tokens and pick which one, which is cool. But it will increase my health by zero unless I slot a crystal here. When I do that, then it'll increase our health by one. You're going to see some of the other tiles have the same thing. So they will increase health immediately by zero, but then if you slot the necessary things on the left-hand side, you can increase your health. This one is super good. It increases your health by two, but if you get both of those gems, you can actually increase it by four instead of two. I have a spot to place this armor right here, and it's white, so now I wanna look for more white armor. As I gain more white armor, then if I find something that has a combo for the armor sets, I would get those benefits. Unfortunately, because I have to send this prototype along to another reviewer, I am not going to be able to finish the game. But I do want to do one more combat, so I'm not sure if I can do this, but we're going to go with it because I want to be able to do one more combat. We're going to use, we have two more feet movement, so we can do one movement here, teleport to here, and use that second movement to move into here. Then we have to have a combat token, which we have, to be able to deal with this minion. But I'm not sure if I need a combat one to deal with the monster in this spot. I don't know. I don't know. I think I think maybe I could say that this combat is for both of them. That's how we're going to play. We're going to try and take out two enemies and we'll end the video there. <laughs> uh, but this spot is an Ice Storm Hex. So I am going to take one Frostbite damage and I get a Crystal. The Frostbite will go down to here. But then with that Crystal, I can slot it here. And that increases our health, which increases our Frostbite and increases this one. Actually, I don't think we can increase that because we cannot be at the same level as our Frostbite. So our health is still at 7 our frostbite is at eight. Yeah, 
That's, I think that's all we can do. We know how these ice spiders work. They'll gain one more silver card. They already had three, so we're just going to discard these for one gold. Okay, That means they get two chaos tokens, but really one is all they're probably going to use. Granted, I think some of these actually give them more cards. So I, yeah, it's important that I have those there. One gar token. I'm realizing I got all excited about this combat. I haven't revealed a tile here. I need to do that quick. Okay. Oh, there is an earth elemental, but it's not next to it. Earth elementals increases all your dice rolls in total by two when you're adjacent to that. So we can ignore that, unfortunately. That would have been kind of fun uh, because we're not adjacent. Our die of hope is still at zero. We'll flip this over. We've got a four and a two. It will definitely use a gar token to re-roll this two die. With that re-roll, they get a five. Five plus four is nine, plus two more is 11. That would be at three damage. I don't want to deal with that. We're going to use a guard token to subtract two from that. Reroll this, so they have four, five, six, seven. These subtract from each other. That means two damage to us. We'll go from seven down to five. With that, though, we'll exhaust this to heal up to six. I think, uh, no, I don't think I'm going to need... I don't think I'm going to need that. And I don't think I'm going to need this because I'm going to need to attack it twice. And maybe the second enemy, I can use that to just take him out. Actually, what am I saying? I have my new weapon. I can deal four damage. Yeah, I'm going to use the Monster Hunter, adding plus two to our die roll and dealing plus one damage. I'll discard this Ice Spider to help us with that. Yeah, we are Monster Hunters. That means all I need is a 10 to deal four damage. Five plus four is nine. Oh, I'm so close. I think it's worth it. Guard token for that, because 5 plus 4 is 9, 10, 11. I need a 12. Okay, come on. Okay, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Beautiful. That is 4 damage with our Holy Scepter, plus 1 from our Monster Hunter. That's 5. It's easy to forget Frostbite. I have to remember those Ice Spiders did deal us 1 Frostbite damage as well. And can you tell it's getting a little late? Sorry about this. I moved into an Ice Storm Hex. You know what that means. 1 chill damage. I am 4 away from dying. We'll gain 2 more Reputation Sneakiness up to 9. 2 gold. We had 1 from before, so we have 3. We gain another Gar token, so I have two Gar tokens and two silver cards, which is annoying because really that's just giving the uh, enemies two silver cards. I will have five then, so I can convert four into a gold card, which I convert right into just a coin, so that will give us a total of four coins. I would also get to place my third shield token here, which is great because at the end of the round, we'd get to gain reputation as shown. I believe it's just one reputation. We'd get three gold because it's equal to the shields that we have on there. And then we draw a number of level one gathering quests equal to the number of hero tokens placed on this card, and we get to choose one. These quests would give us more objectives to gain certain benefits. We would have to go... <laughs> to uh, that gathering space, which of course would hurt our chill and get us closer to dying. But so we get to choose one of these. We would then reveal the level two one, which just states that we would need to defeat one of the ice abominations, which I have these cool guys I was going to use. Uh, but those ice abominations would be out. We would need to de uh, defeat at least two of them. If we could do that in the remaining rounds, we win the scenario. And with that, my friends, I think we're going to call it a day. <laughs> Hopefully this playthrough gives you just a little bit of taste of what the expansion is providing with the Cruel Frost. I love the new tiles. I really like the Frostbite uh, mechanic where I have Frostbite and I have damage to deal with. The chill, I'm still trying to figure out. I don't love the fact that uh, after I activate it once, it's just going to kill me the second time. I want to be able to go and explore these tiles, but I'm scared to do so. I wish there was a way to maybe mitigate it, and maybe there is, and they they haven't given that in the demo, or I don't know about it yet. Uh, but I like the idea of the chill track. I just, I think the frostbite is great. I think the chill track is just a little bit more cumbersome uh, for this. I will say it does add even more complexity to a game that is already quite complex. So if you are at the limits with the base game, you probably don't need the expansion. But man, if you like this game, this expansion, I mean, I just can only imagine all the different scenarios they can do with all these new tiles, 
all the different mechanics they have going on. I loved the idea of the minions on the board and you're taking them out. I loved being able to join the clans. Oh, and the two heroes, these two heroes are very different. The other hero is creating charges. She's about jewelry and all this stuff. Oh, it's so cool. Uh, she was just more complex and I didn't have enough time. So I ended up doing Arlen, which actually he's fun. I love his monster hunter and his own armor, which is really nice for increasing his health so he can withstand more damage. Yeah, I'm quite happy with this. I personally am going to back this. Uh, like I said, this uh, prototype, I'm going to be sending it on and then I'll be buying my own copy of the game. So I am thinking of doing another playthrough of Euthia. Let me know if you have a scenario you'd recommend. Now, I do have the base game and the first expansion, so I have all of that stuff. Uh, so if you have one that you really think was really fun, especially solo, let me know because I'd love to do that. There's just a lot there. It's hard to figure out which ones to do. <laughs> Thank you all for watching and a special thank you to our patrons. If you're excited to see what comes next, then I need you to meet me at the table. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.